Good news, PC players, as Final Fantasy XVI got confirmation that the PC version is underway and plans for upcoming two paid DLCs. PAX West 2023 happened over the weekend, where producer Neo Kiyoshida finally shared that the PC version is being worked on. Unfortunately, no further details of when it will be released, but we can expect further news about it before the end of the year. You might remember when the game was originally announced, it included a line about the PC version being released at least six months after the PS5 version. This was later taken out for further promotions of the game, but we'll have to wait and see when it will be coming to PC. Also, it seems the developer has changed their mind about DLCs for Final Fantasy XVI as two are planned. Previously, they had mentioned that in May, they hadn't any current plans on expanding the game, but wanted to see what the response from the community would be about further content. That seems to be overly positive, as they now have not one, but two DLCs in the works. Final Fantasy XVI also received a minor update version 1.10, which added some new cosmetic items and three new outfits, including a new look for the dog companion, Torpor. This week, we were treated with a closer look at Lies of P, which is releasing later this month. The Pinocchio-based action RPG introduced its cast members and characters. The cast range from talent that's worked on games such as Diablo 4, Elden Ring, Final Fantasy XVI, and Steel Rising. Developer Round 8 also showcased the weapons that are in the game, diving into a number of ways you'll be defending yourself against the nightmarish foes that exist in Krat. The weapons range from your usual glaives, dagger blades, and double-sided spears, but the most eye-catching and downright terrifying is the combination of the live puppet's axe blade and acidic great curved sword handle. You can swing a bunch of puppet limbs at enemies that wield an axe blade. There was also the look at costumes which you can dress up your character in with a range of strange outfits. If you haven't seen the weapon showcase, take a look what's in store. It's both creative and very horrifying. Liza P has already gone gold, which means it's right on track for release on September 19th. The sequel, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, got some updates on development over the weekend. One piece of major news was the release window of fall 2024. Since the development's interruption, it was unknown when the game would be launching, but now it has been confirmed for the latter of next year. Another major reveal was the studio that has taken over working on the game, The Chinese Room. A new announcement trailer shows a little bit behind the scenes. It focuses on mainly the storytelling that the team is bringing to the game and seems to be quite the main focus for the action RPG based on the world of darkness. Dark and visceral is used a lot to describe the game. We can also look forward to some actual gameplay in the new year as early as January. Since the game has switched over to a new team, it will be interesting to see what changes will come to the game from what, what we saw previously. In case you missed it, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is an action RPG set in the city of Seattle years later after the events of the first title. It is also based on the tabletop universe of the same name. It follows a young vampire navigating the vampire clans, who are vying over the control of the city. The game will be coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC via Steam, Epic Games Store, and GOG in fall of 2024. The developer CD Projekt Red has been drip-feeding eager fans with teasers of what's to come for Cyberpunk 2077. The one and only DLC for the game, Phantom Liberty, is going full steam ahead towards its September 26 launch. However, the expansion will also come alongside the highly anticipated Update 2.0, which seems to be touted as the second coming of the game. They went over further details about exactly what will be coming with the free update 2.0 and what's included in the expansion Phantom Liberty. The update will bring a bunch of usual bug fixes and also holds a few updates including UI and enhancements. Major additions are vehicle combat, combat AI improvements, the new police system, as well as changes to loot and crafting. The paid expansion on the other hand, Phantom Liberty, will bring a whole new area called Dogtown new story, new quests, boss fights, vehicle missions, relic skill tree, 100 new items, as well as an increased level cap to 60. Of course, this is just a quick overview of the changes and additions, so if you want the full info, check out the link in the description below, as with all news mentioned in this video. Baldur's Gate 3 has had a pinnacle for launch, with the PlayStation 5 version having released this week, the CRPG seems unstoppable. In a recent sit-down between Laren Studios head Sven Vinnick and Dungeons & Dragons' Ton Kenrek, they went over the challenges of producing such a wide-branching game narrative-wise and its resulting number of peculiar problems. This includes 174 hours of cutscenes to cover a number of different outcomes. 
But interestingly, the interview touched upon exactly what's next for Larian. Vinick shared that they will have a team that will continue to work on Baldur's Gate 3 post-launch, but as for Vinick, as of the PS5 console launch, he's done with the game. The next project is already in sight and a new game is already planned. If you are hoping for some hints of what that might be, I'm sorry, but Vinick is keeping this one close to his chest of shiny armor. He didn't shed any light on what the new game will be, but the team will be taking a break before moving forward. He described the development process as being rather intense and full of adrenaline working on such a lengthy game as Baldur's Gate 3, but some things already have seemed to be put in motion for the next project. What do you hope the studio will be working on next? Let us know in the comments below. A new game announcement this week came in the form of a new brutal turn-based tactical RPG called Beast, taking on a medieval setting worn-torn by conflict and plague. Set in the Ottoman Empire, a veteran returns after a decade spent as a slave, only to find the homeland of Carpathian unrecognisable, ravaged by a hellish plague and is also dealing with the reign of the king driven mad. The trailer hints at possible love that's also now been taken by death, and all that is left is his band of loyal soldiers. The footage shown features in-game scenes developed in Unreal Engine 5, but the game wouldn't be called Beast without something more sinister lurking inside the main protagonist, filled with moral decisions that will shape combat as well as an insanity system. Combat is described as fast-paced and gridless, shown at the end of the announcement trailer are a few encounters which end in some intense scenes. It looks to be a mix of Darkest Dungeon 2 and tactical games such as Mutant Year Zero, the blend of dark, medieval struggle and more gory fantasy horror elements makes it an intriguing concept. Beast will unleash some time in 2024 for PC via Steam. Blizzard has revealed their plans for Diablo 4 moving forward, including sharing that there will be annual expansions for the action RPG. In a recent interview with Deserto, Diablo General Manager Rog Ferguson talked about the overall content plan for the game. The Diablo 4 calendar will consist of quarterly seasons and will roll out expansions every year. There are also plans for further storylines and Ferguson remains pretty confident that Diablo 4's lifespan will be providing further content for a long time. Another comment expressed how in between the titles it didn't quite live up to the player's expectations because of the gap between Diablo 3 and Diablo 4. Quarterly seasons and annual expansions are to make up for lost time and give players what they deserve. Blizzard has already announced the theme for Season 2, which is Season of Blood, releasing in October. It looks like Starfield has now skyrocketed to the number one spot for Bethesda game launches. The developer revealed that not only has Starfield now surpassed 6 million players at launch, but it's now Bethesda's biggest game of all time. The space exploration RPG had its full launch this week, meaning those who purchased the standard edition or playing on Xbox Game Pass could finally lift off. Starfield's I guess you could call soft launch was on September 1st for premium editions of the game. We can only assume that the 6 million also includes the Game Pass players who can download the game as part of the subscription for both PC players and Xbox series. Speaking of consoles, it's also the first exclusive next-gen game for Xbox Series, making it the most wishlisted game on the platform and Steam for Bethesda games according to Xbox head Pete Hines. You might be wondering, well, with the success, what does it mean for future Bethesda titles such as Elder Scrolls VI? According to Hines, who also fielded this question, it's a by a case-by-case -case situation. He went on to talk about streaming on web-enabled platforms giving players choice on how they play, but of course, skirted the definitive answer. Starfield could be the first of many Xbox exclusives, but nothing has been confirmed for the future of Elder Scrolls titles. Starfield is out now for all on PC and Xbox series. If you're currently making your way through the galaxies, be sure to check out our latest In Your Face build with our Starfield Shotgun build guide, and for all your constellation needs, you can head to our wiki. Well that's it for the week in the wikis, please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits, and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community, keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness.